What Jesus Said About Heaven In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught his listeners the difference between earthly and heavenly treasures. In their pursuit of the Father's perfection, Jesus' disciples will face a variety of everyday concerns that have the potential to deter them from unwavering loyalty to the kingdom and its righteousness. The first is wealth. Two Treasures of the Heart Matthew chapter 6, verse 19-21, through 21, Amplified Bible Do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers, will be also. Material wealth was significant to the Israelites because it was frequently viewed as a sign of God's blessing and the reward for obedience to Him. According to one ancient rabbi, Wealth could be acquired illegitimately, and all too often, the wicked ones are the ones who prosper. Jeremiah laments, You, O Lord, are uncompromisingly righteous and consistently just when I plead my case with you. Yet let me discuss issues of justice with you. Why has the way of the wicked prospered? Why are those who deal in treachery, deceit, at ease, and thriving? You have planted them, they have also taken root. They grow, they have even produced fruit. You are honored by their hypocritical lips, but you are far from their heart and mind. But you, O Lord, know me and understand my devotion to you. You see me, and you examine the attitude of my heart toward you. Drag out the faithless like sheep for the slaughter, O Lord, and set them apart for the day of slaughter. How long must the land mourn, and the grass of the countryside wither? Because of the wickedness and hypocrisy of those who live in it, the beasts and the birds are consumed and are swept away by the drought. Because men mocking me have said, He will not live long enough to see what happens at our final end. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. Wealth accumulation for the sake of wealth accumulation is deceptive because it can provide a false sense of security or an inaccurate assessment of one's spirituality. So Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. The term behind the negative imperative, do not store up, is the sorizo, which is related to the noun treasure. The wordplay can be rendered woodenly. Do not treasure up for yourselves treasure on earth. Treasure represents the accumulation of what is valuable. However, those things that some people treasure are vulnerable to the destructive effects of life in a fallen world where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. The moth was commonly recognized as a destroyer of the most basic materials of life. A little devouring insect could destroy the finest garments. The term rust is a catch-all for consuming, implying not only a destructive action on metals, but also a broader deterioration. It destroys a variety of materials, crops, vines, and even teeth. The most valuable possessions are subject to being consumed. The type of thief Jesus is referring to steals from the wealthy to enrich himself. Moths, rust, and thieves are the forces that cause earthly treasures to lose value and eventually be destroyed. Rather than accumulating material valuables in this life, Jesus advises, store up treasures in heaven for yourselves. He does not identify these treasures. Paul refers to the gold and silver of the Christian's work for the kingdom that will be rewarded on the day of judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 through 15, Amplified Bible. But if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will be clearly shown for what it is. For the day of judgment will disclose it, because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality and character and worth of each person's work. If any person's work which he has built on this foundation, that is, any outcome of his effort remains and survives this test, he will receive a reward. But if any person's work is burned up by the test, he will suffer the loss of his reward. Yet he himself will be saved, but only as one who has barely escaped through fire. But the contrast of treasures on earth with treasures in heaven more importantly implies a distinction of values. 
For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, Jesus says, going beyond good works to focus on the heart. The heart represents the core of a person's being, the true inner person, the source of spiritual, emotional, and psychological life. The nature of their heart determines a person's values. Jesus has already indicated that the heart is the source of our good or evil deeds. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, Amplified Bible. But I say to you that everyone who so much as looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This line of thinking is also applicable here because a disciple's heart can be evaluated based on what they consider to be their most important value. The righteous value must be God himself. If Jesus' disciples keep their hearts entirely focused on the Father in heaven, then all other world treasures will pale in comparison. This will set a trajectory for healthy discipleship, including one's priorities, motives, righteous deeds, ambitions, security, personal self-worth, and relationships. Two Eyes of the Heart Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 through 24, Amplified Bible. The eye is in the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear, spiritually perceptive, your whole body will be full of light, benefiting from God's precepts. But if your eye is bad, spiritually blind, your whole body will be full of darkness, devoid of God's precepts. So if the very light inside you, your inner self, your heart, your conscience, is darkness, how great and terrible is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, money, possessions, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. These difficult verses must be connected to the preceding passages to make sense of them. The disciple must choose between competing treasures. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers, will be also. If a disciple's gaze is fixed on the earthly treasure as their value, personal significance, and earthly security, the heart will be dark as well. When we concentrate on something evil, the eye becomes a conduit through which evil enters the inner person. The word for master is kyrios, which has enough ambiguity to mean a landowner. The usage here denotes a general principle regarding both the level of commitment to an earthly master and to God as one's ultimate master. The term for serve is dao luo, which refers to the work of a slave rather than an employee. A person may work for two employers, but an enslaved person is the sole property of one master, implying an exclusive owner who demands exclusive service. Loyalty to one's master is extreme. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. The biblical concept of hate and love understands them to be life patterns, not just emotional reactions. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Psalm chapter 139, verse 21 through 22, Amplified Bible. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect and utmost hatred. They have become my enemies. This prepares for Jesus' radical call for unconditional commitment to him to the point where one must completely reject anything that hinders attachment to him and love or completely give oneself to him. The metaphors for choosing between masters culminate in the proverb, you cannot serve both God and money.